I found that used down here a lot. Um, just your thoughts on getting the franchise and, and uh, the connection you have between Dallas and Texas now? Well, it's exciting. Um, it's uh, you know a fantastic market. Uh, it's a fantastic place for our players to play. Um, um, talk to the players. They they love living in the community here in Cedar Park and Greater Austin and. It's a uh, it's a first rate facility and uh, it's a, a definite asset for the Dallas Stars and I think uh, you know having it uh, now under common ownership uh, will will create even more synergy uh, than we've had in the past so it's a it's a great day for for the Dallas Stars and a great day for me. You talked to in the event here a second ago about the opportunity in the community to start picking up things like Dr Pepper Stars centers and, and really growing youth and, and even adult hockey. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Well, it is. I mean, uh, you know, you grow the game through the grassroots, and especially in in uh, in markets like uh, uh, like Texas. And and so the same things that made the Dallas Stars successful that they started back in uh, beginning in 1993 are the c kinds of things we need to think about now in this market. Now that uh, uh, that uh, you know we're we're committed here um, for the long term. So it's uh, it, we've had discussions with the C city of Cedar Park about about a, a, a city facility, uh, uh, Dr. Pepper Star Center, if you will, and it's a business that we're growing in Dallas. And uh, you know, we own most of the ice rinks in, in Dallas-Fort Worth, and it's an important part of our business, and it's something that we'd like to see happen here. How do you feel about planning? Obviously, there's ideologies, and, and the transaction was just completed, but how do you start, pre what's your kind of time frame for starting to plan and start to figure things out? Once you get, have you guys even been able to sit down and map things out yet? In terms of? Just the developments around the arena, Oh, um, well, th they're really two separate things. I mean, developing the real estate around the arena and uh, and the hockey team are 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 are, are, di are pretty distinct. In mm -hmm. fact, uh, uh, you know, we'll be run completely separately with uh, yeah, different leadership. But uh, uh, you know, we have a concept in mind uh, here. We've done some preliminary drawings about what could be on the lands, and but it's in its infancy now. Um, and uh, but it'll be something that'll be developed here, uh, you know, throughout the year and. Hopefully, in the near future, we uh, we can actually begin building something. So, um, yeah, we're we're down the road a bit. Is there a model that you're looking towards for how you're going to develop the area around kind of an experience that maybe another team has that you'd like to emulate? <coughs> well, it it, it 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 probably a bad example just in terms of th the scale that's available here. But you know, if you go to the the Phoenix Coyotes arena and you see what they've created there in terms of in terms of an ev event, uh, you know, an event area there that uh, they've done a, a really nice job with with that. So, you know, we would like to think that we can create some sort of a, you know, an open air pavilion uh, place with uh, with the right types of uses and and uh, uh, you know restaurants and bars and things that uh, that are commensurate with entertainment facilities. So that's something that we'd like to emulate, uh, albeit on a smaller scale than what you have in in, in Phoenix, but. I think that's uh, that's where we're headed. You got to play uh, Texas at their fancy place, play and be a part of that, and that's, that's got to be kind of neat when you're coming down here to, to, to see. I mean, obviously there's a winning product there. It's nice. In fact, uh, they were nice enough to uh, to make me a ring as well. So <laughs> um, uh, I'm thrilled about that. Uh, I, I can't tell you. And I I got to uh, to give each of the players the rings today, uh, uh, along with uh, Jim Neal and Scott White. So. It was uh, a thrill for me and a thrill for those kids. Uh, those guys, uh, you know, to win a Calder Cup is a, is a heck of an accomplishment. And, uh, and uh, you know, we, we told them that today. Can you play off the, uh, I guess, the Dallas, the NHL makeup on the Stars? You also have a stake in the junior hockey team. H how do you yourself, how do you keep track? Do you watch all those games? Tell me what's, uh, how do you uh, manage your schedule watching all those games? I don't miss many. <laughs> um, uh, and so I have a I have a challenging home life because it revolves around uh, you know when the teams play, and uh, different time zones helps. Uh, but you know all the games are readily available, and you know, I can watch all three teams play on my iPhone. So um, it, there's it's it's pretty rare I miss I don't miss much. Uh, in terms of how you run them, you you know you you hire the best people you can and uh, and uh, try to stay out of their way, and uh, at the same time give them the support that. Uh, that uh, they might need and uh, you know try to do everything you can at, at uh, whatever that might be to, to help them be successful so but it all revolves around hiring great people and and, uh, and letting them do their jobs. Hey, Tucker, guys, uh, you know, you're, I believe you're coaching Flex 
from about three to seven and seven to about nine to ten? Well, uh, you know, a lot. I, I spent my, uh, I, as a teenager, I used to come down a lot to Texas when my grandparents were alive. Uh, my mother's a, uh, a Texan, and uh, my, my whole family down here went to, to UT, so uh, I've, I have some Longhorn blood in me. And, uh, but I haven't been here in a long time. So, you know, I, I came down here last year and, and saw the facility for the first time and, you know, cannot believe the size of Greater Austin. It's uh, so much bigger than I remember. And, uh, you know, turning around here today and the number of cranes and, and construction activity is, is, really, is really hard to believe. So it's an exciting place to be. And so when I came for the first time last year and saw the market, um, you know, saw Cedar Park and, and I could see the, the vision and, and, and uh, you know, the excitement, it was great. Uh, I've seen uh, lots of buildings that are built on this model. It's a, it's a common model that you see um, for rinks. And, uh, but this, is the, this one has been done to a different level. It's, uh, uh, it really is a, a special, a special rink. It's been finished well. You can see the, all the extra money been spent on it, and it, it really is a first-rate, uh, you know, first-rate facility. And uh, uh, so, it, you know, it's a, it's a great spot. It's a great location. As I say, it's a, it's a great community to play. It's such an asset being a three-hour drive from the NHL club. Provides us with, uh, with a lot of benefit. And as I say, it, it, you, you just can't find a better place to have your, have your players play. And we're well supported. I mean, we're one of the top attended teams in the AHL, and it matters. It matters to our to our players to play in front of uh, a, a vibrant fan base, and it, it it helps with their development. There's no question about it. And and being so close, it, it allows our uh, our management to get down here all the time. And you know, it, it matters to our players that Jim Nils in the stands, uh, watching them play. And uh, and a lot of a lot of players in the AHL don't get to see their general managers very often, so it's uh, it's a real benefit. Um, well, there's no doubt. I mean, it's an advantage to be clo in close proximity. Um, uh, I, I think, though, that it, it's not going to be easy necessarily. I think that having them close proximity is one thing, but having them in the right environment is another. And we have all that here. And so, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's certainly beneficial for the, some of those teams to try to get closer, and we'll see what ultimately happens there. But uh, um, I, we, like our, we like the situation here. And it's exactly what uh, where Jim Neal came from in Detroit, having uh, Grand Rapids uh, similar distance away, and and look at uh, what Detroit accomplished and has continues to accomplish in terms of being a, a perennial um, contender in the NHL and, and having that AHL team vibrant, you know, close, uh, in sync is is uh, is uh, is a must.